Welcome everyone to ACCR's compressed lunchtime webinar um, presenting our analysis on South 32's uh, climate plan. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Harriet Cater, the climate lead of the um, Australian climate team here at ACCR. I'm joined by the wonderful Fiona Deutsch, our company analyst, who will be presenting um, uh, our analysis today, along with Naomi Hogan, our strategic project lead. Um, Naomi and myself will be joining Fiona for the Q&A after the presentation. I'm joining from unceded Aboriginal land on the, um, the, the land of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people in the ACT today. Uh, I pay my respects to elders past and present and also pay my respect to the traditional owners of the lands that everyone is joining from today. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping before I throw to the wonderful Fiona. Um, this webinar, like all of our webinars, is being recorded and will be made available um, for um, those who couldn't get here today and those who are in different time zones. Um, there will be some time for Q&A at the end, so please pop your questions in the chat. This is a, a different format for us, so this is a half hour webinar as opposed to a full hour. That may mean we have less time for questions, so please get in touch with us um, if, if we don't get to your questions. Um, and also, yeah, really welcome feedback on this, this sort of more condensed format. Uh, it's a busy time of year for everyone. So we think it might, might be favourable, but also conscious that it might feel, it could end up feeling a bit rushed for those attendees. So all feedback welcome. I don't think I have anything else to say at this point. So without further ado, I will throw to Fiona. Thank you, Harriet. Hi everyone, I'm Fiona Deutsch. Um, thanks again for joining us today. I'm a company analyst in the National Climate Team and I'll be presenting our analysis of South 32's Climate Change Action Plan, which will be going to a vote at the company's AGM, which is held on the 27th of October. So firstly, I thought I'd take you all through the agenda for today's presentation. Um, ACCR has conducted a thorough analysis of South 32's CCAP and I encourage you all to read our detailed report. However, our presentation today um, will just cover the key message for each of these sections. On the 9th of September, Climate Action 100 Plus released an updated net zero company benchmark assessment for 14 Australian companies in preparation for Australian, Australia's upcoming AGM season. Now, since South 32's 2022 cap, uh, CCAP was also released on this date, um, it was not covered in CA 100's assessment. So ACCR has conducted its own analysis of South 32 CCAP using the CA 100 benchmark as a framework, and that's shown in this table here. We can see that South 32's lift and its goal to reach net zero scope three emissions has resulted in a tick for indicator one. However, we can also see that there is room for improvement for indicators two to eight. Um, I also want to note that South 32 has not got a short-term emissions reduction target due to various complexities, and we'll explore those later in the presentation. However, this assessment reinforces the need for active engagement, and ACCR encourages investors to actively engage with South 32 and encourage the company to increase its vision and courage. So in the first section of our presentation today, I'll talk to South 32's emission profile and climate commitments. South 32's emissions footprint is quite sizable. The processing of alumina and aluminium represents 53% of the total emissions and 83% of operational emissions. It is also the largest source of scope to emissions due to the carbon intensive energy supply um, at its smelters. Uh, additionally, metallurgical coal produces 20% of scope one emissions and that's driven primarily from fugitive emissions. And lastly, scope three is particularly sizable, representing 76% of total emissions. When we look at the emissions by asset, we can see that hillside aluminium in South Africa represents the largest source of operational emissions, and you can see that here in yellow. And that's followed by Worsley Alumina in blue and Illawarra Metallurgical Coal, uh, which is fittingly in grey. Uh, looking now at South 32's climate commitments, Notably, South 32 does not have a short-term target, stating that due to technical, uh, commercial and social complexities associated with hillside aluminium and worse, the alumina, it is not confident emissions reductions could be achieved within a timeframe of a credible short-term target. 
Now, South 32 does have a medium term target um, and it's an uh, operational emissions re reduction target of 50% by 2035. Um, and in FY21, the company adjusted its baseline to account for the divestment of its South African energy coal asset and its Tasmanian um, manganese alloy smelter. Now to 2050, the company has set net zero scope one, two, and three goals. Uh, due to the breadth of the commodities that South 32 produces, um, the Paris alignment of its medium and long-term targets are quite difficult to assess. The Transition Pathways Initiative assessment of South 32's targets for the CA100 net zero company benchmark uh, determined that South 32's medium and long-term aluminium intensity pathway uh, which also includes alumina refining, um, was aligned with the IPCC special report on 1.5. However, its diversified mining business, so that includes bauxite, uh, copper, silver, link, um, sorry, zinc, nickel, and manganese, um, this was deemed inconsistent with the pathway. And the metallurgical coal business doesn't seem to, uh, doesn't appear to have been assessed. So in aggregate, um, South 32's medium term scope one and two target is inconsistent with a 1.5 degree pathway as it excludes scope three emissions. However, we note that South 32 has introduced a scope three net zero by 2050 goal, along with its already stated position of a goal of net zero operational emissions by 2050. So we expect this assessment uh, may change for the company's long-term alignment. Uh, now I'll talk to South 32's decarbonization strategies. So South 32's decarbonization plan concentrates on its uh, four operations that generate the vast majority of its scope one and two greenhouse gas emissions profile. So that's Hillside uh, Aluminium, Moselle Aluminium, Wesley Alumina and Illawarra Metallurgical Coal. Now this chart here demonstrates the scale of reduction required to 2035 and 2050, along with the contribution to the scope, uh, to the total scope one and two emissions from each of the major sources. However, it is unclear how much each asset will contribute to the required abatement to 2035, as South 32 has not quantified the key elements of its strategy, which is inconsistent with the expectations of the CA100 plus benchmark. Now, within this section of our presentation, um, we've assessed the opportunities, the challenges and the risks um, to the decarbonization plans for South 32's highest emitting assets. Uh, additionally, we thought it was important to note that South 32 has not disclosed a marginal abatement cost curve um, like its peers such as Rio. A MAC curve would really help investors identify decarbonization projects that the company is investigating and particularly elucidate the cost and scale of the carbon reduction opportunity for each initiative. South 32 has an internal carbon price of $60 per tonne. However, a MAC curve, uh, without a MAC curve, it's not clear uh, what abatement projects, if any, would be viable within this price. So first and foremost, I'd like to talk to Hillside Aluminium. Hillside is wholly owned and operated by South 32. It's the company's largest source of emissions, representing 59.5%. And this is due to its energy intensive operations supplied by ESCOM, the South African state owned entity, which owns and operates South Africa's coal dominated grid. Now, moreover, the smelter plays a key role in stabilizing South Africa's national grid and its power agreement with ESCOM, uh, which goes out to 2031, allows for load shedding in times of system emergency. Now, decarbonizing Hillside is going to involve decarbonize the, decarbonizing the entire um, South African grid, of which ESCOM makes up 86%. So this is a material risk for the company, not only because of ESCOM, but also because South Africa is in a staggering and protracted unemployment crisis with an unemployment rate of 33%. Additionally, there are tens of thousands of workers that are employed in the coal mining and power sectors that will be required to transition. So this combination means that South 32 needs to work with ESCOM and the South African government to employ just transition pathways and principles every step of the decarbonization pathway. And we're seeing the company um, in the beginning phases of this planning. Hillside um, also risks becoming internationally uncompetitive over time, given the emergence of car carbon border tariffs and growing demand for low carbon aluminium. 
Therefore, it's quite significant that South 32 decarbonizes this operation. Uh, recent research from the Center for Sustainability Transition and Blended Finance has determined that South Africa will need $250 billion US dollars over the next three decades to transform its coal-fired economy, with at least $175 billion coming from the private sector. An additional challenge for South 32 and ESCOM are grid um, constraints to connect additional renewable energy projects, which will need to be resolved over the short and medium term. However, there are current opportunities to locate projects and provinces that do not have these grid bottlenecks. Uh, thus far, South 32 has stated it's investigating options with ESCOM, um, independent power producers and behind the meter storage options. Um, and we have engaged with South African energy market experts um, who note that, you know, it's clear that significant challenges exist. South 32 actually has ready opportunities to underwrite the build um, the build out of renewable energy systems in the ESCOM grid. South 32 would be at risk of not meeting its medium term target should the company not manage the decarbonization of its power supply at Hillside. So ACCR really believes investors would, would be really well placed to push for more granular, substantial and tangible updates on the initiatives and the advocacy the company is undertaking to secure renewable power supply to its Hillside aluminium smelter. Uh, on, on Moselle Aluminium, Moselle is the only aluminium smelter operating in Mozambique, um, and it's powered by the hydroelectricity um, purchase, power purchase agreement, which is due to expire in 2026. Now, South 32 has indicated in the CCAP that there are risks surrounding the renewal um, of the hydroelectricity PPA. And the company has stated that they're working to extend the power supply agreement as there are no viable alternative supplies of renewable energy at the necessary scale. Um, and without extension of the agreement, the company will be limited in, in its ability to achieve its medium term target. Um, now, South 32 has assured us um, at ACCR that the agreement is likely to be renewed. However, uh, we recommend that investors track this matter closely. Uh, and engage with the company regularly to get updates on this agreement, given the potential carbon risk um, from coal powered electricity supply should the agreement fall through. Uh, turning to Worsley Alumina, um, Worsley is an integrated bauxite mine and alumina refinery um, of which South 32 operates and holds an 86% interest in. It represents 17.6% of operational emissions and is the fourth largest carbon polluter in WA, almost as large as Chevron's Wheatstone LNG plant. Uh, in the short term, South 32 is exploring energy and process efficiency initiatives. However, the larger and more looming challenge for Worsley will be the transition from coal use in its operations and power supply. Additionally, in the short term, there are supply chain risks with the Griffin coal mine, which supplies Worsley um, and has entered into administration yet again. Due to this, South 32 has been seeking opportunities to import low quality coal from Indonesia. Um, but while South 32's ultimate goal is to electrify its operations at Worsley using renewables, this is going to require a change in process and energy infrastructure um, as, an, as renewable energy does not generate steam. Um, additionally, it would require investment in renewables and energy um, infrastructure in the region to supply the scale of renewable power um, required. In the interim, South 32 is working towards a conversion of on-site coal-fired boilers to gas, um, which would only reduce emissions by about 15 to 20% in the medium term. ACCR is concerned by an apparent lack of detail and timeline around when the company would phase out gas use or the potential for this plan to undermine the imperative to move to renewable energy. South 32 could pursue a hybrid model where on-site boilers are converted to gas for direct steam production and power is supplied from renewable energy sources. Um, ACCR would also like to see South 32 engaging with the government to proactively explore funding and support to expedite the shift to the highest possible share of renewable energy at the site. Um, on Illawarra Metallurgical Coal, this encompasses two underground metallurgical coal mines, um, Appen and Dendrobium. Together, these mines represent 10% of South 32's operational emissions. 
IMC's scope one emissions are predominantly from fugitive methane emissions, which is an exceedingly potent greenhouse gas that traps 28 times more heat than carbon dioxide in 100 years and 84 times more heat in 20 years. Appen is also the gassiest mine in New South Wales and the most carbon intensive in Australia. Um, ACCR really welcomes the decision not to pursue, pursue the Dendrobian Next Domain project, um, as well as South 32's commitment not to develop or invest in greenfield metallurgical coal projects. However, we have concerns around the speed to which South 32 is rolling out its methane abatement technology, uh, which has been in development with the CSIRO for almost a decade and has received $15 million in government funding. So given the um, record underlying revenue increase South 32 saw in um, FY22 from IMC, we expect the company to accelerate its rollout of methane reducing technology as soon as possible. Uh, quickly commenting on offset use, South 32 has an appropriate emissions mitigation pathway, which prioritizes the avoidance of emissions. Um, ACCR would like to see South 32 go a step further and place a firm cap on offset use, particularly considering the risks for the company uh, in meeting its 2035 target. We would like to see some disclosure on the forward use of offsets and whether they make up uh, part of the 2035 or 2050 target at this, as this is currently um, unclear. Uh, looking out to 2050, South 32's decarbonisation pathway is quite vague, uh, relying on technology solutions for the majority of decarbonisation plans post 2035. Um, we're not completely unreasonable. We don't expect South 32 to have concrete plans, but there is a lack of detail outlining how the company will support and advocate for the development of these technological solutions um, particularly as the company has not disclosed a MAC curve. South 32's scope three emissions, um, as you can see here, were adjusted in FY21 to account for the divestment of South Africa Energy Coal and Temco, and that resulted in an approximately 42% reduction in scope three emissions. Um, we think it's important to note that while the divestment of fossil fuel assets helps to decrease the exposure of companies to climate transition risks, it rarely leads to real world uh, reductions in greenhouse gas emissions and should not be relied upon as a decarbonisation strategy. Um, in this instance, of course, South 32 retains a level of influence over its ex asset since it supplies 32% of ESCOM's required thermal coal. On the other hand, as mentioned previously, we really welcome the news on dendrobium. And you can see here in gray, um, the foregone scope three emissions that would have represented um, over, would have been represented over its proposed lifetime. In regards to the company's scope three decarbonization plan, um, again, we note that South 32 is clearly in the early stages of planning with the company intending to look at three strategic areas, um, partnerships, industry engagement, and innovation. Uh, we recommend investors insist on more regular updates on the initiatives, given the materiality of scope three emissions, representing 76% of the company's total emissions. Um, and we wanted to quickly touch on South 32's um, 1.5 degree scenario analysis. So firstly, we absolutely recognize the efforts of South 32 to undergo scenario analysis, uh, stress testing of its commodities and of the company's transition risk. Um, however, we've noticed that metallurgical coal was a commodity that significantly increased in the company's 1.5 degree scenario in 2050, uh, with South 32 asserting that seaborne hard coking coal is required to support greenhouse gas emissions reduction targets and the new integrated capacity uh, in, steel, in the steel industry. Um, we also note that the IEA net zero emissions scenario states that while demand for coking coal or metallurgical coal falls at a slightly slower rate than for steam coal, existing sources of production are sufficient to cover demand through to 2050. So given this, um, it appears that South 32 scenario analysis may be incompatible with a 1.5 degree scenario. Um, okay, in the last section, I'll touch on climate policy, capex, accounts and audits, and finish with governance. So South 32 has a stated position that it does not support direct advocacy um, from industry members on energy coal expansion or energy coal subsidies, which ACCR really congratulates. Um, however, South 32's financial year 2022 review of its industry associations 
found that the New South Wales Minerals Council, Queensland's Resource Council and the Minerals Council of Australia um, aligned with its policies, despite each of these associations displaying climate advocacy positions in the last 12 months that are misaligned with the company's policy on energy coal advocacy. ACCR would like to see South 32 rating in this type of advocacy, particularly as it's against uh, South 32's own policy. And in addition, um, South 32 really has an opportunity to exert climate positive policy influence as a means of um, accelerating the decarbonisation targets within its own climate change plan and of the economies in which it operates. Uh, a prime example of this would be South 32 publicly and actively encouraging the rapid expansion of renewable energy capacity in the Western Australia power grid to support the decarbonisation of Worsley Illumina. Um, on capital allocation, South 32 has not explicitly committed to align CapEx with the 1.5 degree pathway, although it is prioritising future facing commodities. Um, we also note that renewable energy contracting will comprise a significant share of the company strategy and that expenditure will present in operational expenditure rather than capex. On accounts and audits, uh, South 32 scored poorly in the initial assessment of the CA100 accounting and audit indicator, although it should be not noted that nearly all companies scored poorly. Um, however, the good news is that within the 2022 annual report, South 32 made significant improvements, including disclosing key estimates, assumptions and judgments, and the impairment of non-financial assets. Um, we believe some areas for improvement could include South 32 disclosing the results of the 1.5 degree sensitivity analysis and how carbon prices have been considered, as well as how carb uh, climate change can impact other aspects of the financial statement. Uh, on REM, South 32 has two related uh, strategic measures linked to the long-term incentive, each weighing 10%. Firstly, this, uh, South 32's response to climate change being the achievement of the 50% to 2020, 2035 target. And secondly, the transition of the portfolio towards the metals critical to a low carbon future. The linkage of the 20% um, of the LTI to the business response to climate change is really great to see. However, um, considering the commercial imperatives associated with decarbonizing Hillside and Worsley, having a higher weighting on the achievement of the 2035 target could be worthwhile. Uh, it is critical that a quantifiable reduction in emissions is the primary input to assessing success for the first strategic measure. Now I realize it's been a long presentation. So to summarize, um, as I mentioned, South 32's decision uh, to not progress for the Dendrobium Next Domain project and its commitment to not pursue greenfield, greenfield metallurgical coal projects is extremely welcome. The company is clearly focused on restructuring its portfolio towards the metal, metals crucial to a low carbon future. Uh, whilst the 2035 target is not completely aligned with a 1.5 degree trajectory, TPI has determined that the company's aluminium and alumina pathway is, and these, as I've mentioned, are the company's most material emissions source, together comprising 83.3% of total operational emissions. Uh, South 32 has significantly increased its recognition of climate change in its FY 2022 financial statements. And whilst more detail is always welcome, the company presents the foundations of a concerted approach for a just transition. Of course, however, ACCR uh, still holds some concerns. Um, we have engaged with South African energy market experts. Um, and as I've noticed previously, you know, significant challenges do exist, um, but the company has ready opportunities to underwrite the build out of renewable energy systems on the ESCOM grid. Um, and as I mentioned briefly, South 32 um, may not be sufficiently prioritizing the minimization or leapfrogging of gas at Worsley Illumina. And we would additionally like to see further evidence of constraining negative lobbying from the MCA, QRC and New South Wales Mineral Council and more positive advocacy um, that complements its strategy. So on balance, it's ACCR's view that this plan is supportable due to South 32's change position on fossil fuel expansion, uh, particularly in contrast to peers like BHP. The core principles of South 32's climate change action plan are sound and worthy of investor support. However, such support should come with conditions. 
Uh, firstly, South32 commits to provide more granular quantified update in 2023. Um, and secondly, South32 commits to exert enhanced climate positive um, policy influence as a means of accelerating the decarbonisation targets within its own CCAP and of the economies in which it operates. So ACCR strongly encourages investors to advocate for these outcomes in your engagement prior to the AGM, and therefore ACCR recommends voting in favour of South 32 CCAP, subject to particularly the provision of quantified updates in 2023. Um, thank you. Well done, Fiona. Um, and yeah, just to reiterate, like it, it wasn't a, an easy call to make um, on this climate plan. Um, there's some really great um, advancements, but as per our analysis, you know, a key issue with South 32 is that they have sort of come to the challenge of decarbonising their portfolio quite late. So it does seem as though they're sort of starting a little from behind, but our overall um, view is that the framework of their plan um, has merit and we just really need to see them get cracking. We did contemplate pushing for the company to provide investors with a, a progress vote at the 2023 AGM. Um, however, um, we elected to not do that um, just due to sort of the scale of the company and the effort um, around um, tabling such votes at AGMs. We think similar outcomes can be achieved just through investors engaging directly um, uh, with the company and pushing for those more quantifiable um, up, quantify updates in, in its um, 2023 plan. Um, Akash, thank you for your question. Um, we might take that on notice. Um, don't have a ready response for that and might want to clarify the, the, the ask. Um, so we might take that one offline. Um, otherwise, I think we are uh, at the end of um, the, at a lot of time. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for joining us and fantastic job, Fiona. You covered a huge amount of content in a short, short amount of time. So thank you. Thanks for joining us.